What is up guys, I wanted to show you guys my Narbash build and guide. I've had quite a lot of fun playing with Narbash and the active cards he has access to, being both growth and order, provide a lot of versatility. I'll run down the build and then as always we'll take a look at some gameplay. First off, throw in that Warlord as your prime card. Add a Health Potion, Shepherd's File and Double Strike Token. If you don't have a Shepherd's File, a Mana Potion will do just fine. Add in a Brawler's Key since you might need to help out with Harvesters. Chuck in a Circle of Health, Circle of Mana and Overflowing Gifts. Circle of Health's passive will give you plus 4.2 health regen to nearby allies and yourself, while Overflowing Gifts will give you and your allies plus 10 health regen and Circle of Mana will give your team 0.9 mana regen. You probably noticed that all this health regen will start to add up quite quickly. I think the most I got one of my allies up to was 50 health regen a second and you can imagine in a team fight how insane that's going to be. Add your tempered play and tune barrier next. These are if you need extra protection. We then have a Lord's Ward with two advanced chronos and an advanced mana. A pendulum of Lords with two advanced chronos and again an advanced mana. Getting that cooldown reduction allows your team to charge into battle and use his ult often for that huge knockup. His stun is also a great way to help out your allies. Add a spiked bone plate with one minor strike, a strike and a greater guard. Add another tempered plate, this time with a lesser health, guard and greater guard. We do the same for energy armor so we get our thorn green weave and add a minor strike, a strike and a greater barrier. Tuned barrier is our final armor card with a lesser health, barrier and greater barrier. So now you can see that we become quite tanky. Finally, add in Honor the Pure. On top of not only all your health regen, you're going to be able to give your allies shields. To end with, I included a lesser health, health and greater health. This will allow you to swap out one of your Thorn Green Weaves or Spite Bone Plate for a Tempered or Tune to become more tanky. To start off, throw in your Shepherd's File and Double Strike Token. Be sure to unlock your Thunk. I take Thunk first because it gives you the opportunity to pick up a couple early kills and it's your only ability that does any damage. I'm laning with Sparrow and she tries to gank Grim so I oblige. I land a stun but unfortunately he gets away. Now this is a bad spot for us. We've pushed the wave up and are quite susceptible to ganks and especially Sparrow who's super fragile in the early stages. I decide to back up a bit because I see the enemy Chimera lurking but my Chimera comes in and decides to fight him. I see Grim drop down to help his teammate and I follow him. Now this is something you should always do. You want to rotate behind the enemy if you can and sandwich them in the middle. I land and a stun on Grim because his back is turned and I then make room from Chimera and speed my allies to help secure the kill. Now when you lane, and this is super important for those heroes that are supporting a hero in a lane, you want to let your lane partner get all of the last hits. You're getting the same amount of card XP and level XP but this allows you to 1. Make sure that you're not both hitting minions and missing the last hit and 2. Not pushing the wave. If one of you is last hitting the wave won't move up, assuming that the enemy team are last hitting as well. Just let your carry farm in peace and keep an eye out for ganks or opportunities where you can rotate to help an ally. If you're wondering why you shouldn't push the wave, the answer is simple because why farm under the enemy's tower when you can farm safely under or near your own. You might be wondering, why am I taking a double strike token? Surely we want a mana potion and health potion. Well not necessarily, remember that Shepherd's File gives us mana regen and we have an ability that gives us health, so why not take more damage? The damage allows us to assist our allies in securing early kills, which not only puts us ahead but interrupts the enemy hero's farm. You can see we were able to kill Twinblast with ease and his stun and movement speed assisted with this greatly. I noticed that my Grux is about to do the black buff and I saw Steel flash up near him so I jump down into the shadow pool as my spidey sense begins to tingle. Surprise surprise, Grux and Steel are heading right for him. Gadget is quick to react as well as we move in to sandwich them. I wait for the inevitable Steel ult then throw my stun on Grux because he's the main damage dealer. I pop my ultimate and let Gadget and Grux go to town. We take down Grux but our own Grux is extremely low. I try to body block Steel as much as possible. A Great ult from Murdoch drops Steel down even more. I give Grux a speed boost so he can escape but Steel charges right into him. I throw my stun before he can kill Grux and Steel falls. We push the tower, Gadget secures a kill on Murdoch and I back on 12 card points. I always throw in my Lord's Ward next. Circle of Health and Mana. I could have gone for Honor the Pure but we already have shields from Muriel so I elect to go for my Spiked Bone Plate. 
Remember to replace your strike token for your circle of mana and your first armor item because otherwise you won't have space to put in overflowing gifts or honor the pure if you decide you need them later. We are sieging a tower when Steel comes in from behind to try and kill our gadget. He completely misses his ultimate because of a speed boost. I delay my stun until I think he's about to charge but when he gets low enough I use it anyway because he'll die before the stun is over and we secure another kill leaving the enemy team outnumbered at their tier 1. The gadget ult is devastating them but they're so low I couldn't resist going in and stunning Murdoch. My Muriel follows up with her AoE shield and we take them out. Supports for the win. On my next back, I finish off my spiked bone plate and throw in a health into my circle of mana. Now you shouldn't do this if you're going to swap out your spiked bone plate or thorn green leaf, but because the enemy team had both physical and energy damage, I knew I wasn't going to swap them out and so I could afford to use the health here. This time the enemy team are sieging our tower and to be honest that's fine with me. I can use my abilities and with circle of health and mana I could go all day. Fortunately though our Grux lands a fantastic pull on Murdoch. I immediately stun him under tower and Grux finishes him off. I land a 4 man ultimate, knock them all in the air and finish off steel. We have the enemy team on the run and we continue to push. This is where Narbash's speed boost comes in handy. I speed myself and my allies up to try and help Grox and I throw down my health regen to keep my allies in the fight. We continue to chase them as Gadget is tickling Grox. Our Grox lands another fantastic smash and grab as we secure our 8th assist. I try to go for assist 9 as I stun Twin Blast but we're just short of one more basic attack as Twin Blast barely escapes with his life. I was forced to return to base as my game disconnected and I died but anyways I decide that we're pretty far ahead so I go for double chrono in my lord's ward. Don't worry about maxing out your lord's ward since it doesn't provide a maxed upgrade bonus. I'm collecting a harvester in peace when I spot my Murdoch getting ganked by pretty much everyone on the enemy team. So like a good support, I head on over there with the rest of my team. Grox lands a great pull as I head to protect Murdoch since he does the most damage. I smash my drums for my ultimate as I catch their Murdoch and we take him out. I stun Grox before he can charge away and that allows us to secure 3 kills, leaving their tier 1 tower vulnerable. We push the tower as Steel helplessly ults. I throw down a stun as my team rip him to shreds. Now I just want to point out where our health and mana are sitting. We just engaged in a huge team fight literally 10 to 20 seconds ago and we're almost back at full health and have 3 quarters of our mana left. This is because of circle of health and mana and also down to the fact that we are a bit tanky but we have some damage allowing us to help our team out. From this team fight we press our advantage even more and take a tier 2 tower. If you secure 2 or more kills always try to take an objective. In fact if you secure 1 kill try to as well although it might not be as easy. Now this was the final time I backed in this game because my team took prime and the enemy team surrendered but the build is straightforward from this point. I took my thorn green weave, maxed that out, sold my shepherd's file for my pendulum of lords, maxing that out, got rid of my circle of health and mana and added in my tempered and tuned barrier with their corresponding upgrades. Don't forget to if you didn't already to add that advanced mana into your lords ward. That will get you comfortably at 60 card points and rocking those drums. It's the final play of the game as we attempt to hand in the all prime. Steel ults our Murdoch in the hope that his team will follow up with some damage but it's not enough to kill him. I give my allies a speed boost, pop my ultimate but unfortunately get pulled by Grux. I'm insanely tanky at just 33 card points and you can see that with 21.7 health regen for myself and my allies we're able to stay in the fight that little bit longer. No one has fallen yet but my team are pretty low. I stun Grux as Murdoch finishes Twin Blast and Grux soon meets his doom. With Twin Blast and Grux both both dead and they're still returning to base because he was almost dead, we can hand in the all prime anytime but I stun Muriel because why not and my allies with the all prime delete her. From this point on it was smooth sailing to our victory but before I leave you to try this build out I wanted to give you some Narbash tips. His song of my people ability will heal minions as well as your allies so you can use that however you see fit, maybe to help your minions push a wave or to build a huge wave of minions up. His march ability can also be used to speed up minions exactly like Gadget Speedgate. Remember that his ultimate is easily interrupted so try to use it when the enemy have wasted their CC for maximum effect. With Narbash you want to unlock your thunk first and then probably your song of people followed by your march. If you think your march will allow you to pick off some kills definitely take that second. 
Prioritize your thunk as the damage on top of your stun is huge. It increases the stun duration and damage as you level it. Leveling your song of people increases your health regen by a significant amount. March is a must to have unlocked, but I think you benefit more from health regen and damage rather than even more movement speed, so I tend to not focus upgrading March as much. His ultimate, as always, is a must. I also want to point out that this build gives you everything you need to win the early game by helping your allies as much as possible. I know I've complained about matches going on for ages, but with Narbash in the early game and this build, I've won games in 20 minutes. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. As always, a full build will be linked on agora.gg. Until next time guys, peace.